Good morning. Once again, uh, we meet for the morning brief. Uh, we're going to provide you with all the details that uh, that you need. And we'll be discussing all the events that happened within this week and whatever we expect from the market and the main uh, things that we need to focus on for uh, next week. Um, Noor, uh, good morning first. So, uh, Good morning. <laughs> as you, as as we were expecting, actually, uh, from the debate yesterday, uh, it kind of like uh, took a lot of attention. It was an interesting debate. Uh, I can see that the dollar index actually is, is still strong despite a small uh, pullback yesterday. But now we're uh, we're trading the 106, uh, which is affecting basically most of the other currencies, uh, mm -hmm. um, S and P, Nasdaq, Dow Jones. Um, all they're, they're doing well so far, uh, holding their ground and even uh, holding the trend up as well. So yeah. um, uh, tell me a little bit, uh, wh what do you think about the debate yesterday and uh, how would that affect with the next debate as well? So for the people that did not watch the debate yesterday, uh, what should we expect and what are the things that I can uh, benefit from for the next one? Or Here's the thing, I mean, for the... Of? I mean, for the debate, usually, I mean, even with the, you know, the reaction that we saw, uh, it's not that big of, uh, it's not that big of a deal because, you know, it, w the most important thing is now we will be waiting for is basically the polls after the debate, which one uh, took, you know, um, uh, more votes from the others. Uh, so, um, I mean, it, it's hard for, for us or to say or to lean towards one <laughs> one of them, uh, but it was kind of like also at the same time, it, it would be... Um, clear maybe i would say that maybe the winner uh was kind of the you know the the uh the former president donald uh, donald trump i mean his answers were a little bit more precise i would say more than uh more than the current president uh but it's still it's it wasn't it's, lagging at least yeah uh, at least it wasn't lagging but it's hard it's hard to to say who basically was you know the winner it all depends on on the polls and that's what basically the market's going to move on but at the same time uh, it's all going to be about you know what happened over the past few uh a few weeks and what's the data is going to show us because even yesterday as an example there was a lot of revisions for the previous uh uh quarter when it comes to uh the gdp data uh, yes, GDP, the final was um, uh, revised slightly higher to 1.4%, but we got uh, revenge um, revisions in the consumption by half a percent. That's too much. Uh, we saw also the uh, new home sales this week, pending home sales this week. Also, most of the data are coming in um, are coming in with a negative surprise. Uh, we saw also the durable goods orders. Uh, so as long as the data keeps on showing more slowing down, this is when the market basically is going to keep on uh, uh, try to price in more than what the Federal Reserve basically uh, told us in the previous in the previous meeting. Uh, after yesterday's data, the Fed fund futures is still pricing in 75% chance for September's uh, rate cut. We also have uh, over 100% chance for another rate cut in November and a rate cut also in uh, in December. Uh, so I think it's still not. Not to forget today, uh, we have the uh, the most important number for this week, the core PCE price index. That's going to be, uh, I think, the the you know the game changer for the market, and the game changer would be if the data comes as expected, because expectations, at least for uh, for the data today, is for both to slow down even further, um, at least when it comes to. Even uh, the PCE, the month over month, we're not expecting, I mean, at least according to Bloomberg, uh, there is no expectations of any uh, increase. So it's going to be 0%. The year over year is expected to slow down towards 2.6, down from uh, 2.7. But the core is expected to rise by 0.1%, which is less than the previous months. Uh, and also the year over year, 2.6%. 2.6%, that would be the lowest level in about almost three years. And this is what's going to give the market more confidence that the Fed will have to start cut in uh, in September. Okay, so all eyes on the the core PC at four thirty p.m. UAE time. Yeah. Um, so um, if we take a look um, to continue the subject, if we take a look at uh, uh, the dollar index and the fact that it's um, it's taking on other currencies, uh, uh, dollar index is. Almost 
uh, at the highest points in the past, uh, at least, I don't know, since the beginning of June, at least, or even before that. Uh, yeah, we're the, the beginning last of time we touched these levels were uh, we were in April and 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 this year. So um, um, actually, one oh six. Yeah, first of May. Yeah, yeah, yeah. May twenty four yeah. April, first of May. Mm-hmm. April the uh, one that would be the second highest. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. No. May May we made a new high. Basically, that was almost almost the highest high, not the highest yeah. high. So. Um, uh, I can see that dollar yen is trading at 161, um, despite all the um, the talks from the Bank of Japan. And as expected, if we break the 160, we're going to continue higher. Uh, where do you think is the ne- next resistance? Because for me, I can see we can easily re- like do uh, a channel on the 163. If we continue with the same pace, there is no intervention. There is no move at all. Uh, mm-hmm. 163 can be a, a next resistance. Here's the thing resistance. today. Uh, today, basically, um, uh, the Japan's Ministry of Finance also appointed uh, a new top currency diplomat. Uh, that was basically the reaction of or why dollar yen is basically above uh, because when you know reporters started to ask him like, what is what is your plan? What's what's uh, um, uh, what is basically your, you know, your plan, your next move, yeah. ideas for the next move? He declined to comment, and this is basically why Italian is now above one sixty one. I think we sh- we should give it a little bit more time uh, because it's you know it's still hot. It's still his first day, uh, his first day on the job. Uh, but to expect another intervention, it is uh, it's. I mean, I would say. It's not a 50-50% chance, definitely, but uh, an intervention is becoming more and more, uh, more and more likely uh, with you know with the end uh, with the end going here. Because remember, it, it, we've seen multiple interventions before by multiple central banks. Uh, they were able some some central banks were able to hold it, such as you know the uh, the uh, the Swiss National Bank, uh, but not for long. Uh, so nobody uh, nobody knows what's uh, what's the Bank of Japan uh, next uh, next move except interventions. But at the same time, we saw the uh, the inflation data in Japan today also um, uh, picking up. And uh, at least when uh, you look at the data, uh, even the um, uh, today the Tokyo CPI is an example. We're kind of two point two percent unchanged. The core is 1.9% unchanged but at the same time we saw the uh the energy the one uh or the core uh sorry it was not unchanged uh it was yeah it was back up to 2.1% and this is slightly higher than uh, the bank of japan uh the bank of japan's target does this mean they're going to uh, they're going to move in the next meeting it is possible because the bank of japan basically said that multiple multiple times so, so i think it's hard to call when they will intervene or if they will intervene uh, but the more the dollar yen keeps going, uh, the higher likely they will intervene. This time, I think if they will intervene, it would be um, in an amount that would be bigger than last time uh, in order to hold the yen um, back below 160 at least. If they can hold it. Well, basically, yeah. so the view is still the same. Um, uh, all talks didn't intervene yet. Um, yeah. We still have the same view as on Monday and the past Friday. We're still holding the same ground. Um, I hope just for the traders that uh, that are following us, just make sure that every time you take a position, put your stop loss, put your take profit, because as Noor said, if we're going to have any intervention, this oh. will happen in a quick way. That's one. Yeah. Second, uh, to take advantage of the market, because now the, the market is trending up. So if you don't want to fight it, it's very easy. You can you can just ride the trend and enjoy the uh, and enjoy the the market because there's good opportunities there. Um, I can see as well um, WTI um, since the last time we touched uh, the yeah. support area seventy two and a half. Uh, we've been flying up. Now we're we're trading at eighty two sixty three. Um, the, the the trend um, kind of we we did the correction targeting now eighty three thirty um uh, as a as a next uh, resistance and then 8490 uh this is wti not uh not mm-hmm. front keep that in mind so uh um are we still expecting this to continue like is there uh, is there a, a positive uh 
uh, a news that is holding this, or is it just uh, geopolitical tension and uh, craziness and the Red Sea and uh, I think uh, all the problems in the in the Middle East. I think it's also tied to uh, you know the ten- mostly with the tensions plus you know OPEC plus uh, strategy for you know uh, uh, increasing the productions later next year. Uh, but if you look at the weekly chart, as long as you keep getting, you know, higher lows and higher highs, there is no reason for you to fight the trend and say, you know, oil is going to go down unless if it's going to be a retracement. Uh, yesterday, yeah. the Pentagon said that they are moving assets also um, uh, and uh, trying or they're getting ready to evacuate uh, American citizens from uh, from Palestine and from uh, from Lebanon because, you know, they think uh, things are going to uh, get um escalate and i i think this is why also you know you've seen you know gold and silver yesterday also advancing uh not to forget also don't forget uh starting next week uh from sunday uh you have the uh, uh the french elections that starts from sunday and it ends i think um uh i think it takes a week uh in france and that's going to be uh that's going to be uh huge uh when it comes to you know the elections in france also in addition to that, we have the Fourth of July. We have the uh, the elections in uh, in the UK. So these are like one of like a lot of events uh, going forward, uh, especially that you know from France, and it's going to affect the market. I guess that next week, depending on what the uh, what the outcome of this election, because so far the the far right has <clears throat> more votes, at least when it comes to the polls, and this is yeah. why one of the reasons why also you know oil from one side is uh, not happy with the geopolitical across the board on the other side also the euro is being under pressure because of what is the expectations for the upcoming elections yeah uh well thank you re- regarding this and and keep guys in mind that uh, uh those elections will affect the middle east as well so uh depending who's gonna win because each one has different uh policy and view mm-hmm. regarding the region here and eventually uh, this affects uh, our trades as well. So, Noor, you mentioned gold and silver uh, taking advantage of that. I'm going to talk about the technical part of this. Yeah. Uh, we mentioned over and over, uh, keep an eye on the support 2290, 2280, uh, 2300. So these are the major support levels for gold. It's been holding those levels since a very long time, since more, almost uh, April. And mm-hmm. uh, we, we didn't break them yet. And we can see a full uh, respect to those levels. So every time we touch it, we bounce back up from a technical perspective, of course. Yep. Uh, the resistance that we have in front of us is the 30s level, which is kind of like the level that we uh, uh, we, we, we reached almost. So um, mm-hmm. uh, we, we almost reached the resistance. If we're going to break above the 35 again, then we, sc- we start discussing uh, an extra uh, extension for this uh, for this move. But if we take a look at the weekly chart, we can still see the uncertainty and consolidation and the market moving sideways. One week, we try to mm-hmm. touch the, the 23.86 and uh, in between the high and the low. And the second week, it's the other way around. So one, one week, the bearish uh, market is in control. The second week, the bullish are in, in control. So it's full uncertainty in the market until this second. I think everyone is still uh, holding around to see if this war is going to extend or not and uh, how what's going to happen in the election and uh, uh, the dollar is going to keep on strengthening. The Fed, is it gonna, uh, are they gonna, going to intervene or give us some new info? Yes or no, the core PCE. All of this is affecting gold. So I think the next discussion... Um, we should we should have a discussion regarding gold. Is it gonna be? Um, is it gonna break before it goes up, or it's gonna go up from here? Uh, but that's for a, for a later uh, yeah for a later I was about discussion to say, because, because we... this is gonna take a lot of time. <laughs> we already <laughs> took we already took forty minutes on this one. Yeah, so, so let's let's sum it up, let's sum it up with the with the indices. North uh, Nasdaq, S and P, and and Dow Jones. Yeah. We can see Amazon taking advantage of. Uh, uh, of of the market and and it's it's been going up and it took as well uh, the indices with it uh, despite the corrections on Nvidia as well. 
So uh, are we still holding those uh, the, the, the trend up? Uh, are we going to see a new high on, on uh, S&P and NASDAQ especially? Here's the thing. I mean, uh, earnings are still good, but the the only one thing that uh, you know people needs to understand is this is basically still the hype of AI. And the only thing, as an example, like MU the other day, Micron, uh, they uh, basically you know um, uh, changed the guidance, which led the the stock to go down uh, to go down even further. So I think the hype is still there, but traders needs to be very careful that this hype at some point it won't just last for long. It won't last for forever. Uh, as an example, Nvidia would not be basically just uh, you know creating thirteen percent every uh, every quarter uh, without any kind of you know uh, some uh, some downside. So I think the correction in the U.S. indices are getting closer because of one thing: the more we get a bad data, it's not going to be good for stocks this time because the more bad data, the more we're gonna uh, the market is basically gonna start pricing in a possible. Uh, recession, not just a slowing down. It would be a question. Uh, the question would be next: it Will it be uh, a soft landing, or it will be a hard landing? And this is for the market to decide based on the data that we will be waiting in the next few weeks.